Have you ever noticed that no one teaches you how to be who you're supposed to be? No one in life ever sits down with you and says, hey, so this is how you do self-discovery. This is how you develop your identity. This is how you become who you're supposed to be. Like for some reason, we don't do that. And to be honest, we absolutely should because a whole bunch of us would be so much further along if we actually intentionally develop our identity. And just in case you've never even experienced this or even heard of this, we are gonna get into it right now. Everybody. Welcome back to another episode of the Keandra Jackson show. Listen, we have an amazing show ahead of you today. If you are someone who never even thought about what your identity is, how it's developed, who you become, who you are, self-discovery, self-awareness, self-exploration, authenticity. If all of those things are unfamiliar to you, <laughs> Baby, you about to get familiar with those because today's special guest is going to help me break down all of the above. I have the amazing opportunity to bring to you Sheree Lachou. She is a licensed therapist. She is a life and relationship coach. She is the co-founder of Love and Acceptance Counseling, Coaching and Consulting, and she does all things identity work, baby. And trust and believe this episode is going to be so juicy. So please allow me to welcome Welcome to the show, Sheree Lachou. Sheree, 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 welcome to the Keandra Jackson Show. I am so excited to have you here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. You know, it feels like an honor to me, so I'm super excited to be here. I love that. I absolutely love you. So, you know, on this whole entire episode, we've been talking about identity, identity formation, development, just all up in your space, because I know that this is your jam. I know that this is the work that you love to do the most, but I also know that there's going to be a whole bunch of people listening and watching and they're like, wait, what is this concept that they're talking about? So I need for you to break it down for the people in simple terms. What would you say is the difference between like self-exploration, but also like self-development, self-awareness, all the selves, because I know you, you be in that realm. So what would you classify the difference of those, those different things? So when you're when you're talking about um, identity development, intentional identity, because identity development is not a new concept at all. Intentional identity development is kind of like when we think about like parenting, and then they have like intentional parenting, parenting with the intent. So when you think about all the selves, the selves are actually all a part of that, but it's a more comprehensive and cohesive way to look at it. So basically what happened is I look back and I said, okay, I've been a therapist for a while. And in that space, I realized that there was a pathologizing that we were doing for personality and like human development, human suffering. And I, I, that was not my jam. I did not get with that. And I was trying to figure out how I had so many people, not just teens and preteens and young adults, but I had people in the thirties, forties, fifties, sixties and beyond that we're getting to this point where they didn't quite figure out, they couldn't figure out why they're in this constant spiral, whether it was in their interpersonal relationships, work relationships, romantic relationships, or just even their thoughts and feelings about themselves, like when things like imposter syndrome would come up, right? And so for me, I had to say, okay, we need to take these things and start extricating them and kind of really make meaning because I believe I had a professor that said to me years ago, all behavior and context in, in its proper context makes sense. I believe that to be true. So with that being said, it's important to do self-discovery. Self-discovery means I need to discover the parts of me that I didn't even know existed. You won't know if you don't go looking, right? Part of that self-discovery -discover is allowing yourself to explore. So like from a therapeutic realm, we always talk about like exploration, exploration of the different types of identity, right? And so when you're exploring, you will discover things. So it's almost like you use those words 
uh, with one another. They all go along. They're all interrelated and interconnected. When you're on your exploration journey, you're going to be discovering things. You're going to be revealing things. You're going to be uncovering things. And through that, you should be improving. So that's where self-improvement comes in. You should be increasing your self-confidence. You should be increasing your self-awareness. If you are not aware, I always say this, one of the most dangerous types of people are people who are unaware, people who are chronically unaware of what they bring, the energy they bring, the intentions that they bring or don't bring, right? That lack of awareness can be a danger to you and it can also be a danger to others. So all of the selves, the self-confidence, the self-improvement, the self-discovery, the self-exploration, right? All of those are interrelated and interconnected. And what my job is often with the clients that I work with and, and just the general public when I'm speaking to them is to make, is, is to allow them to be able to connect the dots, to allow it to make sense. I love that. You dropped so many gems in there, like seriously, because I don't think this is a topic that we talk enough about. And that's why I wanted us to have this kind of conversation today because no one like sits you down at a particular phase in your life and say, okay, it's time to discover yourself. Let's intentionally develop who you will be. Like no one really does that. And I think in our, you know, maybe late teens and early twenties, we are trying to figure out who we are and how we want to show up in this world. And we may or may not do some things that, you know, may not be in alignment with <laughs> our values are what we want to do just because we're trying to navigate what this life looks like and so i see a lot of people are trying to figure this out like late 20s 30s 40s and even beyond this is when they get intentional because we're, we're this is our word that we're going to use today this is when we get intentional about who am i like how did i become who i am when did this shift when did this change and so I'm just super excited that you broke down the concept of self-awareness because baby, <laughs> we as therapists, we both know that self-awareness is a huge thing that a lot of people don't have. They don't tap into, they don't know how to develop. And it's kind of scary to be honest with you, just a world full of people that are lacking self-awareness is kind of creepy. What, what do you have to say about that? I definitely agree with you. I think, I think there's so little um, intention put behind people really understanding and being aware. And my thing is, once you become aware, then you're compelled to do. I, I always talk about the burden of the knowing. Ignorance truly is bliss, y'all. It really is. Because once you know, you can't know and not do. It's, it's a very difficult thing to know something about yourself and choose to, so when, when that happens, usually that comes up with distractions. So I'm gonna be a workaholic, I'm gonna be an alcoholic, I'm gonna be dependent on something other than that thing because once I'm aware of it, I can't just simply allow it to exist and do nothing. So I have to either distract or I have to intentionally avoid because to know and not do, the Bible says is a fool, right? Right. Some that's, of y'all are foolish. That, that's, that's <laughs> that's the word. Word. Some of y'all are out here being completely foolish. And some people are intentionally being foolish. And then some people are just being foolish unknowingly, you know? And I, you said you can't know and not do. Woo. Listen, y'all need to sit with that just for a quick, sit with it for a quick second because you are truly held responsible when you are aware of something. You cannot hold on to any type of knowledge, expertise, awareness of anything, and just be like, well, I know, but it's gonna be whatever. No, 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 you're gonna be held accountable. God's gonna hold you accountable to the very thing that he made you aware of. And so you have to be smart, you have to be intentional. I'm gonna be using that word a lot. You have to be intentional and you have to tap in to who God created you to be. And I think a huge part of this, which isn't even a question that's on our little list that I wanted to talk to you about, but you know, we gonna get into it. I think a huge part of that is lacking a deeper level of authenticity, right? So 
it's important for us to be who we're supposed to be, figuring that out and then operating that in its fullest capacity versus code switching or dumbing yourself down or, you know, making yourself small and shrinking. And so what would you say, because I know authenticity is also in your realm of, of, in, of work, what would you say to someone who is still trying to figure out, okay, I'm trying to figure out who I am, trying to develop that. I'm trying to be intentional about it, but I'm just lacking the capacity to show up as my authentic self. What would you say to somebody who's struggling with that? One thing I'd say is your uh, one of your last guests, well, not last guests, but a previous guest that you had on, Kendra, beautifully captured that, beautifully. Like a lot of things she was saying, I was like, yep, that right there, that right there. And so one of the things that I would say is being authentic is a choice because we live in an inauthentic world with inauthentic food, with inauthentic uh, means. We have artificial intelligence for a reason, right? And so when you think about that in that space, you have to be intentional about saying, I want to be authentic. For me, I grew up in the days of Oprah Winfrey. And I don't know, Oprah, Oprah is Oprah and Yana Van Zandt have been my mentors for as long as I can remember, since I was in my preteen years, probably, that they've been my mentors. I don't know if they were living authentically, but I know their message of authenticity deeply, deeply resonated. It took me many years, a couple decades actually, to get there from the time I heard the messaging. But if someone desires to be authentic, they first have to make the commitment to do it and to understand that authenticity is a catch-all phrase, like a lot of phrases we hear. People talk about being authentic and keeping it real. And what you find is there are facades that people have wholly accepted as themselves. People have curated who they are not who they were created to be, right? Mm -hmm. So so when, when you have, for me, my relationship is with God, everything starts from the foundation of God. Who did God create me to be? My parents raised me to be the best that they could based on what they knew, right? But we have to remember something, especially those of us persons of color, specifically, let me talk specifically to my Black folks. Many of us, even if we're from places other than the United States, we were in areas that were colonized. At the very, at the very least, we have been minoritized and oppressed in some way. And so the generations before us had to learn survival. And in them learning survival, they equipped us the best way they knew how with the tools that they had to allow us to survive and to live in a world that was hostile and hated us. So I understand the why for it. However, when you are in a space when you want to authentically live, breathe, and thrive in the fullness of you, because for me, I'm for the collective liberation of my folks, right? And if we want to be collectively liberated, it's one thing to have autonomy, it's another thing to have freedom, but the collective liberation means our freedom of thought and movement and body and intention. And so to set the intention and say, I want to have this authentic life, I want to be able to be free and not have to think about code switching and not have to think about, am I going to meet the religious restraints that have been placed on me, the familial restraints, the societal restraints. In order to do that, there's a deconstruction that is needed, right? Because what we don't realize is from the day we were first you know, born, there's a programming that is done. There's an indoctrination that is, I mean, and this isn't anything sinister or, or conspiracy theorist. Like, it's like, well, how do you raise children? Like you have to indoctrinate them with something like some values and societal standards, right? Sometimes though, that may not be who God created you to be. You may not be able to access all those spaces because, you know, in the words of the great Sean Corey Carter, AKA Jay-Z, people always want to tell you how to do it and they never did it. I was never in a space with anyone who lived fully authentically. That wasn't this duty and obligation and I have to do this. And well, you know, you have to talk straight like this in front of white folks. You know, you have to do this in front of these people. You know, when you're at work, you have to do this. Don't wear your hair like that. Get the job first, then do what you want to do with your hair. And so because I came from a space that had all, all of those things, there were many great things that I had but I didn't have a, a blueprint in front of me about how to be authentic. I literally had to go to the source. 
God, I'm stirring up a lot of trouble down here. I got issues with folks. Folks think I got issues with authority at work. Uh, my clients love me. My boss is not always so much. I want these relationships with friends, but I realize I go deeper than what most people want to go. Most people have great breath. I go deep with fewer. That don't work for everybody. And so I had to decide, which is how I ended up naming my business. I had to decide to love and accept myself. In order to love and accept yourself, you have to go through revealing and asking God to reveal those truths about you. And if you are somebody who is not um, a believer in God, like I don't, I don't prophesize and put my beliefs on anybody else. I couldn't have made it without the Lord. But everybody has to have some center. You have to have something that anchors you. You have to understand that there's something bigger than you. If not, it's a dismal, bleak future that you look at. If you think it's just you life is too heavy the burden is too great so something and somebody has to be guiding it right and so when you go to that place and you say okay i'm going to start here i want to be authentic i don't know how to do it because nobody ever told me how to do it like you said keandra we're not taught this and so i had to ask god to reveal things to me for me that started in 2004. honey let me tell you when he reveals you to you and you thought you were walking in a spirit of altruism <laughs> I thought I was the next Mahatma Gandhi, Martin Luther King Jr., Mother Teresa. Like, I was like, oh, wait, this is me? Oh, face crack. This was all me? Nasty little something. Ooh. And then you realize it. And then you say, okay, what are the pieces that need to stay? And what are the pieces that need to go? That's that self-exploration journey where you're discovering things about yourself. And you get to a place where you say, these things, I, I, they're not bothering me. I'm going to learn to love them even though people told me to despise them. It's part of my secret sauce. It's part of why God made me the way I am. I'm not gonna be for everybody, but for the few that I'm for, I'm gonna stand in that. And honestly, I didn't see success professionally, relationally, or in, in any other area until I developed that mind frame and, and really stood in that. That's so good. I'm glad that you got a chance to share a little bit kind of your personal story because some people need to see what this practically looks like in someone's real day-to-day -day life we can talk you know abstract and in theory all the time but when you say hey i went through this this was my struggle this is what i went through this is how i overcame this is how i how i figured out who i was i had to go through god to find out who like this is what makes it real to people so thank you so much for you know sharing that and I know that there's going to be people who are probably going to be listening to this and they probably ain't going to do nothing we're talking about. <laughs> but what would you say is the flip side to all of this? So if somebody was genuinely like, you know what, y'all talking about this self, this intentionality, this self-development, discovery, I don't want to do none of that. What type of person would they become, what type of human being would someone become if they did not focus on doing this type of work? I'll tell you like this, to be honest, to be very, very honest, you know, when you sit in church and they say, now I want, to, I want you to look at the neighbor to the left of you and look at the neighbor to the right of you. And I want you to say, it's more likely if you're doing the work, the two people next to you aren't. It's more likely that they're not because there, there's levels to this. Y'all know how we say there's levels. There is levels to this. And I will say this work is not for the faint of heart. This is not the easy way to go through. I do it with couples and I do it with individuals. And I tell the couples, there's an easier path. If you just want to work on just behavioral things, stay at the surface level. You can make it. You won't get the depth that you have. You won't get the, the, the richness and the connection that you have, but you can make it. We, listen, we can survive a lot. So those people will stay in a space of survival. Those people will likely con continue to struggle with imposter syndrome. They'll likely continue to need a lot of a lot more external validation, right? Those people, some of them actually become quite successful in a lot of ways. So they may make great amounts of money. They may find fortune and fame. They may, you know, find the love of their lives. They may have children. And in all those things, you know, I, I remember my mom used to tell me the Bible would say, in all you're getting, get understanding. When you don't have the understanding, none of it will make sense. So you will find yourself in front of someone like me that may even be 20 years your senior. And what you will say is, I thought I had a good life. And now what I was doing 
to maintain that life ain't working no more. Because at some point, being superficial, gliding on the surface, it at some point, it, 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 it won't be enough. It won't be enough to sustain you. It is not sustainable. Is it doable? Yes. Can you survive? Yes. But can you thrive and can it keep you at your optimal? You won't be able to optimally perform. You will find yourself um, constantly questioning, am I in the right space? Does this make sense? You'll likely struggle with things. There's some of us that struggle with things like depression and anxiety that don't have anything to do with that. They're just our chemical makeup or how, you know, life experiences. But some of us don't have to be in that space. And we're going to find ourselves in that space because we didn't do the work to figure out who am I? That changes the, the trajectory to what you're going to do in life, where you're going to go. If you don't know who you are, if, Keandra, if you didn't know who you were, you would never, you might get a little bit of doubt here and there. I mean, listen, unless you're an egomaniac, of course, there's going to be some doubt. Unless we're completely narcissistic, there's going to be some doubt. There's going to be some fear. That's normal. But if you didn't walk in who God created you to be, even when you didn't feel it in the moment, there's a knowing that you have that this is what I'm meant to be. And this is what I'm meant to do. That is what has allowed you to guide your steps and then to help others to guide their steps. And that's the difference. Woo! So you said a lot of good stuff, but what really stood out to me was like the levels, right? So we can, I was, you know, when I used to work with couples, <laughs> cause you know, your, gra your girl graduated, she retired from seeing clients. But the difference between the couples that I was working with, I was always talking about the levels of like, you can survive in your relationship and barely be hanging on by a thread, baby. You can sustain or maintain and just be like, okay, I kind of like where I'm at now. I mean, it's not bad, it's not good, but then you can also thrive where you have all of the elements of what you need to be self-actualized or even on the road to that, but then also in partnership and being able to do that well with, with, with your partner too, you know, that's just amazing. And so I think the same concepts apply to this. Like you can survive if you don't want to do this work. And like she said, you might be successful. You might, you know, do the things that you thought you may want to do, but you won't reach the pinnacle. You won't be able to get to where you're supposed to be if you don't do this deep dive of work. And I firmly believe that this joint, that stuff will catch up to you. Okay. Like not who wants to be 60, 70 on their deathbed, just barely talking about Oh, well, I don't even know who I am. Oh, I should have did this 40 years. Oh, I could have impacted this. Who wants to do that, right? Like the goal, since we're talking about faith in this, the goal is for God to be like, thy good and faith, well done. Come on in, enter into the gates. You know, you live a life well. And so that's the name of the game. We want to live a life well. And so... We can talk about this all the day long, but I know there's going to be people listening and watching this conversation and they're going to want to stay connected with you. Before we get into our little game, can you please tell my audience and my listeners and my viewers of how they can stay connected with you? Because I know with all the gems you drop, they are definitely going to want to do so. If anyone wants to connect with me, which y'all will see me all over social media. But if anyone wants to connect with me, uh, they can reach me at my website, which is www.sheraylashu.com. I'm Sheree Lashu on every social media site. So as long as you remember the last name is L-A-C-H-H-U, every social media site. I think I'm even on spill and threads now. Like, yeah, I'm literally out in these social media streets. <laughs> That she's on all the platforms, even the new ones. So if you're not on Spill and Threads, you need to get your life and join us over there because I'm loving, I'm not on Spill yet, but I am loving the Instagram platform Threads. And I know you're going to drop gems over there as well. And so if someone wanted to, let's say, go deeper, because we talked about the raggedy folks and the people who didn't want to do the work, but there are going to be some people who are like, you know what? No, it's time for me to do this. I've been slacking on this. I need to do better and be better. Can you give some additional resources, whether they are your own or from other people to help facilitate that type of development? So one of the resources is going to be for any of your listeners or watchers. I want them to have um, a pre-recorded 
uh, webinar that I did, and it was specifically around like high performing, high functioning professionals, but anyone can benefit from it. And it's called From Burnout to Balance, um, and it's Mastering Life and Business with Clarity and Purpose. And so I want the listeners to be able to have that so you guys will be able to tap in and have that and learn a little bit more about intentional identity development. Some of the other resources are, one, having a process in which you decide to work through your journey. Likely, because again, this isn't, when you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs and that the bottom is like the physiological needs, that is the way in which our world is set up. Do we have food, shelter, clothing? Okay, the other stuff can wait. And intentional identity development is saying, no, these things are just as essential as the air you breathe. It's just that essential. And so my suggestion is working with a therapist or a coach in order to do this work. If you have a serious trauma that needs to be um, fleshed through, I would recommend working with a therapist. Yes, they can do the identity development, but they can also handle any type of psychiatric needs. If you don't have psychiatric needs or you already have a therapist and they're addressing those and you just want to do this work, I would recommend coaching for you. Some of the other things I would recommend is guided journals. I have one that should be coming up really soon because I tend to uh, make up journals for my clients in order to for them to be able to utilize. So I will have one available soon, but there's others out there. So any guided journal that is asking you self-discovery and self-exploration questions. So a question like that might be, if fear wouldn't stop you, if fear was not in the way, what would you do right now? If no one would judge you, what would you be doing, right? If you had to identify yourself, not based on any of your roles, can you name three uh, values that are the biggest values that lead to the character traits you have. So an example would be, I'm a wife, but I'm not going to talk about how I'm doing for other people. I'm going to talk about the fact that autonomy is my top value. Most people don't say things like that. They say they value friends and family, and it's it's more um, about other people. They externalize them. And my value is autonomy because if I don't feel autonomous, everything ceases to, to, to be available to me. Creativity, imagination, peace. And my, I protect my peace at all costs, so I need my autonomy. My autonomy is, is even bigger than any other relationship I have, including my marriage, y'all. That's what makes me such a great wife. Let's talk about it. Period, okay. <laughs> Listen, one of the other things is, um, there's a book, The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle which is a really um, great book. Um, there's, uh, Oprah has a really, really great uh, soul sessions. That is phenomenal. She also has a guided uh, journal that goes with that as well around meditations and things. So anything like that, that is feeding you. Your goal is to look at the stages of intentional identity development and then get the resources that help you. There are podcasts out there I'm not that big with a lot of them, but I will say Oprah's uh, Super Soulful Conversations is one of the podcasts. I would highly recommend that because she brings on different people to talk about different areas of it. And so it's going to be something you want something to challenge you. You cannot be complacent and grow. You can be content in the space you're in. You don't want to be complacent. You cannot grow and be comfortable. Growth is in an uncomfortable uncomfortable process. You shouldn't be in pain 24 seven, but it's going to stretch you. And the other thing I would recommend is getting with groups, growth groups at churches, growth groups, even on social media, Facebook has some sometimes getting with groups because accountability is big. Y'all, you can't grow if somebody's not holding up a mirror in front of you because you'll walk away from that mirror. But if someone is in front of you, whether it is your mate, whether it is your bestie, whether it is a, a business colleague or partner, that is what stretches you and helps you to be accountable. And if you don't have that, find a paid mentor, paid mentorship. You need accountability in every stage of it. You need it. And if you have to pay for it, it's worth it because it is it, it is an investment in you. Listen, you know I can talk about paid mentorship and coaching all day because people be wanting a free, free, free. But I love all of the resources that you provided. And I know that they're gonna be useful to the people who really truly want to do the work. So thank you for all of those gems and nuggets. I just wanna know, are you down to play a little game with me? Because you know, 
I don't let nobody come on my show and we not have a little fun and we can get into your mind and your psyche a little bit and just enjoy ourselves. So are you down to play? I am down. Full disclosure, y'all, I'm neurodivergent. Filter is off. Keandra knows this, but let's get it. Okay, so before we move on, for people who don't know what neurodivergent is, can you just tell us in one quick sentence what it is and then we're going to get into the game? Neurodivergent basically means my brain is divergent from a neurotypical brain, meaning that's people who may have autism, ADHD, various other conditions. And so that means I don't have a filter as much. <laughs> well, this is perfect because we are going to get into a fun game of Would You Rather and Why. So not only do you have to give me your preference of the two things, but we to know why as well. So are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, first question. Would you rather be in jail for five years or be in a coma for 10 years? Coma me, please. Coma me, please. And hopefully I lose weight while in the coma. Coma me, I, no jail, no ma'am. She said, no, we, we're not doing jail. You're not going to come find me. Y'all five feet. I'm petite and I'm too cute. And that's that's a no. It's going to be a no for me. Issa, no for her. She said, Issa, no. Moving on to the second one. Would you rather have a personal maid or a personal chef? Okay, so I can speak to that. I've never had a personal chef. I have had a maid and I usually feel like I'm doing it better. So definitely the chef. Mm-hmm. Well, she said, I can clean better than you. So why am I going to pay you? I'm going for the chef. I'm going for the chef. Okay, we found out about that. Number three, would you rather solve world hunger or global warming? This may sound mean, y'all. Uh-oh. But, but let's not be short-sighted. I would rather solve global warming because that will lead to us all being hungry because it's destroying everything. I like the way you think that's good. <laughs> that's a good one. I love that answer. That's probably the best answer. Okay, I love that one. So moving on to number four. Hmm. So would you rather stay the same age forever or stay where you are right now financially forever. Okay, I'm I'm trying to climb up. I'm ascending financially. So go ahead, keep me at the same age. I'm 45. I don't feel like I look 45. Skin glowing. Mm -hmm. No makeup, y'all. No makeup. Black don't crack is what she said. Black don't crack. <laughs> me, please. Yes, Lord. <laughs> she said I'm staying the same age because black don't crack. Okay. And last but not least, number five, would you rather lose the ability to speak or lose your ability to read? Do they mean read or read? Because there's a difference. I never want to lose the ability to read, but to read? I'm read words. On the <laughs> there are audio books. I need to be able to speak. I need to be able to communicate. We have been silenced too long, especially as a black woman. No. I love these answers. Yes, this is so good. Thank you so much, Sheree, for joining me on another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show. You know we're going to have to get into another part two so we can go a little bit deeper. But thank you so much. It has been a joy to have you on. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Um, I love the show. I'm a fan of the show. I've been watching the show. And so to be able to be on the show, it, it's a pleasure. To I tried to tell y'all that Sheree was going to bring the fire. I just hope that something that she mentioned in this episode is literally life changing. And my final thoughts on this is to find out who the heck you are supposed to be. I can't even imagine going through life not knowing my God given purpose, not knowing who I'm supposed to impact, how I'm supposed to impact and even knowing who I am because if you don't know who you are how are you going to show up to be amazing in this world so I hope something that we mentioned in this episode sparks some thoughts sparks some dialogue sparks some curiosity within yourself to say okay they were saying and dropping some truth so let me go ahead and see if I can tap into my own 
self-discovery because I don't want you to be one of the ones that I was talking about in this episode of not doing the work and being able to reap the negative consequences of what someone who doesn't do development work will be. I don't want you to be one of them raggedy human beings. So if you know that you're supposed to be doing this work, I pray that something mentioned in this video was life-changing to you. Tap into Sheree and the resources that are in the description. And look, this is a whole entire journey or process so no matter what age or how old you are, whether you're 30, 40, 50, or 60 plus years old, it's never too late. I just want you to get it. I don't care how old you are. I just don't want you to die not knowing who you were and why you were here. So thank you so much for watching another episode of the Keandra Jackson Show, and I'll see you next time. Bye.